Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our beginning of phase two of Star Wars The High Republic. We're so excited to get this started with you. I'm your host, Michael Delatorre. And I am Bryce. We are uh, two thirds of the Guardians of the Will. Uh, we are missing our partner in crime and our brother in the force, Jonathan Chiato, but uh, hopefully we'll get him on here next time. But we are very excited to uh, give you guys our review on uh, issue one of the High Republic by none other than the great writer Kevin Scott. Absolutely. And as per usual, we're going to start with the League of Comic Geeks to see what they have here. And they have this wonderful cover, which is the main cover. And it's the one that I have on the issue. And we can see the artwork. Uh, I love the colors. Blue is my favorite color, so I'm partial to blue. Love the lightsabers. Love the Jedi. They look awesome, powerful, strong. And then there's this ominous yeah. figure in the background. Yeah, I was going to use the exact same word, Mike. It's ominous, yes. ominous person in the background there. Yeah. So it's very exciting. And then let's look at the alternate covers. This first one. And I think, Bryce, you got a couple, right? Yeah, I got a couple. I did not get this one. This is a very, very cool cover. Uh, yeah. it, this kind of almost uh, the way the way it is. I know these are, I, I believe, you know, sons that are in the background, but it almost reminds me of, you know, like an end game for Marvel when, you know, Doctor Strange and, and Wong mm -hmm. and all those guys come out. Like, that's kind of what this reminds me of. It's a really cool cover, though. Sure does. Very dynamic. I can sense a lot of movement. I love yeah. it. I'm here for it. And here's the next cover. Do you have this one? Yeah, so, I like this one too. It's very gritty. This is a little yeah. bit gritty. Uh, love that, you know, the uh, costuming here is a little bit different. Not quite um, full Jedi, you know, so. They look more, it's like Jedi casual. Yeah. It's yes. really cool. I like it too. I like it. They look really, I mean, he's just, I mean, they're both badass Jedis. They look really cool. And then the next cover. This is awesome too. Look at that swipe uh, of the blade. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Uh, almost have to like, uh, to do the picture, you almost kind of like have to, you know, Tilt the comic, you know, to, to see more in the landscape style. It's a really, really cool cover. She's like running down, which I only think she's like flipping through the air. It kind of reminds me of when Ray, when Ray backflips oh, over the tie fighter. Yeah. Yeah. This is what this reminds me of. That's right. Looks like it. All right. But you definitely want to tilt that comic sideways so you can, so you can see it. So, and here's the version, the virgin yep. version of that cover. No yeah, I was, if I had the opportunity to get the, this particular cover, I would probably do it this way versus, you know, with the lettering and everything on it. Yeah, for the artwork, for sure. Absolutely. And then we have this cover, which is very reminiscent of. Yep. Page this is the one that one. I have. This is one of the ones that I got. Right it's nice, here. nice. I recognize yeah. a lot of characters in here. A lot of species, I should say. Yes, and it's definitely like um, it almost kind of looks like when you think about watching like a TV show or or a movie and and they're like and I take New York City because it always happens right like somebody's walking down in the mix of hundreds of thousands of people like and you're just centered on this one character. Um, it's kind of what this reminds me of. Right, because the Jedi he definitely draws your attention for sure. Yes, hundred percent. Then we have. This cover, which is kind of cool. Yes. I, yeah, we come to find out this guy's got some pretty unique abilities. Yeah, he does. More than just abilities, too. But yeah, I like the colors. I like these like primary colors. It's bright. I see a lot of action, a lot of motion. Looks really good. Yeah, this would remind me of like, you know, those like comic book trading card style um artwork. This is what it reminds me of. Like we're going to make a trading card, but we're going to use like a kind of totally different look to the character and colors are a little bit more vibrant. Yeah. 
and I can't get out of this image. There's no little X. All right. And then here's the same cover, virgin variant with no lettering. Yeah. There's the X. And that's the Mayhew variant. Just those, those are ones that are pretty cool. I think we've seen those already. We haven't seen this one. This is the Peach Momoko variant. Very anime looking. Yes, very cool. Mm -hmm. I like they did a lot of different covers here. And they covered a lot of different um, art styles. Mm -hmm. Look at her leg I like that. All the tattoos on it. Her cones are really sharp. And we have the Virgin variant. No yeah, these are perfect ones. Like if if you know if you're ever gonna see these artists, you know, at a comic con or something like this, it'd be the perfect perfect books to have signed. Oh yeah, right here. Would be not to worry about any lettering. You could put the you know have them sign exactly where you want them to sign. Like in gold or silver would look really cool. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Let's see this one. Oh, no, we haven't seen this one. She's deflecting a uh, laser here. Looks really cool. Yeah, very cool. It's very action action packed. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely love this cover. This is a really cool one. It is. Do you have this one? I don't. Uh, the other one is that I that I have is the one that we haven't seen yet, which is the uh, two Jedi uh, standing next to each other, right above. Oh, this one. This one. Yes. Yep. Ooh, with the statue. Yes. Statue nice. Right. Tell yeah. us about that statue, Bryce. Where have we seen that before? Oh, um, a movie that also has a lot of destruction in it. <laughs> so those are all the covers. Nice. We have lots of different covers. I love it. And let's see what it says in here. So Balance of the Force, Chapter 1, The Pilgrim Moon. A new chapter begins for Star Wars, The High Republic, which is Phase 2. 150 years before the fall of the starlight, another beacon burns bright in the galaxy, a beacon of faith and spirituality, Jedi. The Pilgrim Moon, the Kyber Heart. But tensions are rising in the Holy City, and dark days are to come. Jedi Vildar Mac, a Jedi safe, and secure in who he is and what he could be, arrives as Jeddah's fragile peace begins to crumble, but a nightmare awaits, a nameless terror that will become the stuff of legend. So we've read about nameless terror in some of the books. So I've got have. a pretty good idea what that might be. We have. And lots of creators here. And of course, awesome Kevin Scott. Yep, one of the one of the five original architects of the High Republic doing doing fantastic work. Mm -hmm. Lots of familiar names. Phil Noto. Ooh, lots of people working on this. So oh it's yeah, gonna, it's going to be good. Uh, characters: Mathea Kathleen, Tay Sirik, and Vildar Mac. Ooh. All right. As we can see, with all those covers, those uh, those. Two Jedi and uh Build on Mac. Yeah. And what's her name? Maddie, as she's a fan. Maddie, that's right. That's we right. We'll find out. Spoiler she's a right. Padawan, yeah. Yes. All right. Very so, proud Padawan. She, it feels like she has a lot of energy. Uh is what I got from her, like when we when we first meet her in the book. She reminded me of uh, Ahsoka. Like yeah. when, she, when they first meet her in the Clone yeah. Wars. All right, so here's the timeline. We're, of course, at the High Republic era. And here's that intro. Oh, wait, I haven't read this. Did I? No. The High Republic, Balance of the Force, Chapter 1, The Pilgrim Moon. It is a time of great exploration in an effort to unite the galaxy, the chancellors of the Republic working alongside the courageous and wise Jedi Knights 
have dispatched dozens of Pathfinder teams into the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim. But it is also a time of great uncertainty. Communication is unreliable, and tall tales of mysterious planets and monstrous creatures abound. Prospectors and pirates roam the frontier, and the worlds of Aram and Arono are locked in a forever war. And on the far-off planet of Dalna, a new threat to the galaxy is beginning to emerge. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, and the, what I what I love about um, this entrance here, and we talk about the far off planet of Dalna, um, and we talk about the threat to the galaxy and beginning to emerge and everything like that, um, is that mission to disaster um, takes place on Dalna, and that's you know phase one. That was the the last junior novel that was released, which was all focused on Dalna, and we had a little bit of history there that. Jedi weren't always welcome there. Right. So it's it's kind of cool to see like this planet, you know, 150 years prior, like what it what it looked like. And I know that we've we've visited um Irem before for sure. Mm-hmm. And maybe you know, those were those the two planets that were always at war, even during phase one that we got a little glimpse in. Um I'm not sure they were not sure. I could be wrong. But I do but like I also that they, planets. yeah, and I like that they mentioned that communication is unreliable, which necessitated the building of Starlight Beacon, you know, right. which is supposed yep. to like amplify the, the communication. And uh, yeah. we're learning about Pathfinder teams. So this is something new in the Jedi Order that we didn't know about before. Yes. Very Just like in, in phase one, we learned about the Wayfinders, right? Yes. And then yeah, now in like phase two, we're learning about long. Pathfinder teams. Mm-hmm. And they're not all Jedi. I don't think all the Pathfinder teams are Jedi. I think we do got some different um, groups out there, like uh, some more like engineer style, like really, really cool. Like um, seeing the preview at at Celebration, all the different um, concept art for all the different teams that we're going to hear from at some point, whether it's in the comic books or if it's in the junior novels, the adult novels, the, you know, the, you know, regular novels. So really cool mm-hmm. and so this comic starts out in kifex the inner rim and it says that not many jedi remember their lives before the order build our mac always said that he was one of the lucky ones a joke maybe the truth what remained that remained to be seen and we have this horrible image of looks like a viking i figured this was typical kevin scott style here where we're just going to start with a little bit of death yeah. um the funny thing is this guy um, here reminds me uh, a little bit of Mumra from the Thundercats. I don't know the Thundercats. I'll, so, I'll, well, I'll take it yeah, from you. Whoever watches this that knows anything about Thundercats might get my reference, but he kind of, when I first saw him, like, wow, that looks a little bit like Mumra from the Thundercats. Uh, but definitely um, a it's very pretty terrifying yeah. person, yes, for sure. So here we see that our Jedi, Vildar, must have been hiding. And I know he was four years old. Yes, he was four. Yeah, four years old. He sees all this happening. And then uh, he says he didn't remember his parents. And he does not remember his home. But he remembers when evil came to the village, which was yeah. this creature right here. And you remember the darkness. Yeah. The fear. And we common theme here, too. Uh, Mike, if we've, if we've noticed, um, was it Lula? Lula would, I believe, um, would have the hyperspace dreams, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lula would have the hyperspace dreams. Um, well, else am I thinking of that would have the hyperspace dreams as well? Um, oh, no, sorry, not Lula. I, 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 I thought it was Vernesta. Vernestra had the the hyperspace dreams, but that's kind of what this you know we have that consistency that during hyperspace these these visions or dreams Jedi would Jedi would have. It's fascinating. Someone, how- yes, yeah. So then we see he's on the transport, and that was just the memory of his or a dream. And then he's talking to another person who's uh probably on a going to Jedi also on a pilgrimage. Yep. And this creature is asking Bill, Bill Moore, are you just stopping by? And he's like, nope, I'm going to stay there. 
It's a posting from the court. She's like, oh, how lucky. Oh, Spencer. And then we see them arriving at Jeddah. And this has got to be like the heyday of Jeddah. Yes. A double pager here mm -hmm. um, in the comic. Very cool. Um, just feel like that whole brightness of this page is like, this is Jeddah in its glory days. Like, See the old buildings, the tapestries, the flags here. Yeah, big temple in the background. Which is familiar from uh, yep. Rogue One. Oh, yeah. And then this ship, you can see it's it's uh, it's still a space traveler, but it's it's older. And here we are, they're landing on Jeddah. And he's going through the crowd, and then he meets up with Maddie. Yep, good old Maddie. And she has a lot of positive energy. She's babbling Chatty a lot. Maddie. Chatty Maddie, yep. Chatty Maddie. And he's all like stoic and quiet, and, but he looks really strong. I like him. And then this uh, this creature that reminds me of, uh, is he like uh, Dexter? Like Dexter? Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. He's like Dexter, right? He just bumps him. Yeah. He's, he's all cricking Jedi. It's like, I beg your pardon. It's like, oh, you'll get used to it. Jedi aren't always welcome here. And this is Jedi. So you're like, wait a minute. This is like their holy city. Yes. Then we find out it's the holy city for a lot of people, not just the Jedi. Yep. So it reminded me of like Jerusalem, you know, Israel. It's, it's oh, holy. Yeah. To a lot of people, not just Jews, Christians, Muslims. It's a holy city, city for everyone. And then we have this two pager here, which has like a little city show going on. I kind of neat, like how they have, you know, uh, street performers, really, is what they are. Yeah. You know. But this, did you see this ghost image? That reminded me of like Tarek and Surrett. From, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Right? Doesn't it look like him when he gets? I that till just now. Yeah, you're right. When he gets 100%. exposed yeah. to the to yep. the box, the thing, and he's like all terrified. So this gave me a little flashback to that. Like, whoa, it's just kind of terrifying. So I don't know if this is a vision of the future, which it might be. And then they're all yeah, interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, because we didn't get really much in here because it was really just this page. Yeah, um, and it just glosses over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then here's the credits, and then this guy comes in, and no one's going to give any credits. And then it's like, trouble. Yeah. And so then yeah, this guy... Comes, with what kind of creature he, you know, he is, or alien that he is, too. He, so that's kind of... He know. reminded me of the one from... Um, who's that? The, the used to be Jedi that has a purple lightsaber. That she's a... Uh, she has her own series of uh, comics that we're going to review later. Uh, from phase one, uh, Temple Peak, Monster of Temple Peak. Mm, okay. So remember that one? She meets that creature. It looks like this. It's following her around. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. You're hundred percent, hundred percent correct there. I, I mean the the bigger guy. Oh, the big guy. Yeah. 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 So then this guy's there, and there's like, you see that there's trouble brewing, and then looks like somebody's looks like he's pickpocketing, right? Is that what's yeah. happening here? He's pickpocketing. Oh. I don't know who he's pickpocketing. The big guy? Looks oh, like it, right? Yeah. yeah, the big guy. He's definitely pickpocketing the guy because I believe that's how the Jedi catches on to him. And... He's sensing it. And yeah. then, uh, then the guy takes off after he's already stolen whatever he's going to steal. He's got his little droid following him. And of course, Bill... Is it Billmar? Billmar's like, hey, wait up. Out of the way, droid. He's chasing him. That guy jumps. He bounds over this wall. Superhuman strength. Our Jedi jumps in after him, and he's gone. Just, like, disappeared. And then we go back to the town where Maddie is, and he comes back. And he comes in, and he tries to, like, this guy's going to punch him, so he, he right. stops him. And that guy gets mad, pulls out a, a blade, tries to shank him. He's like, I was trying to protect you. He's like, I don't need your protection. Yeah, and I was kind of... Kinda cool like when you when you think of this scene um is that the jedi aren't afraid to, to get into a tussle or at least he's not afraid to get into a tussle here like you know i'm gonna defend you but if you're gonna come at me i'm gonna take you out too 
Yeah. But maybe that's one of the reasons that they're not liked because they just like butt in where they're not asked to. And then we have this double page scene. It's nice. Yeah. He's like, Very. enough. <laughs> Look at this. Looks like a big bird. Phoenix. Looks like yeah, a Phoenix. Phoenix. Looks like yeah. a Phoenix. And then when he sees that, yeah, he's part tricked. of his his trauma yeah. takes him back to his four year old self. And he's like, never again, because he thinks it's it's a yes. destroyer. Yep, he definitely thinks it's somebody with darkness. So Vildar pulls out his blade, and then uh, Maddie's like, wait, wait. And he's like, is that correct? Did I met? He's like, you you know who I am? And Maddie's like, yeah, this is uh, Adeptarnamiak. Sorcerers of the Tons representative in the Convocation. So it's somebody big. Yeah, and the Convocation seems like um, it might be a little bit more trouble than than it's worth. Uh, does So I'm curious to see how it plays out. Like, you know, what kind of control they have and, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then Bildar is like, oh, I apologize. But he has that image of that childhood trauma. Yeah. Because I didn't know it was you. And he's like, oh, you know, he'll be fine. Right, Patch, yes. Patch right. things up. It's like, no, I got this. And he's like, I'll take care of it. No, no worries. So she's she's been living, though. She, she knows how to deal with this. Then they go to the shrine. They go in yeah. there. And then it turns out that they've been stealing items from the shrine. So yeah, they don't know who, and that's kind of why. Yeah, what the the main thing is when she greeted them, he they were gonna go find uh, Master Liban, and right. she's like, "Well, I'll change the plans. We need to go to the shrine because there's been a theft." And then uh, I I've already been reading the book that came out, so I I kind of know who it is. So spoiler alert, but it's nice to see it from this end now. So they get in there and there's a shrine and she's like, you know what? The, the Guardians of the Wills, they're still here. So there's more of them they've been protecting, but they don't know how they've been able to sneak in and steal all these things. And they're stealing these force uh, sensitive, these force sensitive objects, artifacts. Yeah. And so then Vildar's in there and they're looking around it's like, wait a minute, that droid, he recognizes it. It was in the marketplace. He told him, hey, get out of the way droid. She's like, are you sure? He runs over and bam, it's this guy again. Oh, you realize he is very quick. Oh, yeah. Because he tries to slice at him. It's the thief. But then he yeah. avoids the blade. He has, he's like the Matrix, you know, like Neo. And he kicks him. <laughs> yeah, exactly with the, yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Reminds right. me too of like the fight between Kylo, Kylo Ren and and Luke Skywalker on crate when he ducks under the blade right. as well. Yeah. For sure. She's like, wait a minute. He's like, be careful. And, he, and the Jedi's like, how are you doing this? He's like, oh, you'd be amazed what I can do. He says he has force abilities. He's mastered them. Right? Even Morikro, which is what Yaddle could do. Yeah, the death touch. Right. So it's really not a death touch, but it's slowing the heart down so slow that you die. And so he's like, now I know you're lying. So then how can I do this? And he puts his hand on his heart and he says, remember what I said about Vildar Mac? That he knew what he was and where he was going. That much was true, but it wasn't the complete story, not by a long shot. That right. started as he lay dead on a cold stone floor. It turned yeah. out death was just the beginning for Jedi Vildar Mac. He just didn't realize it yet, and neither did I. Not even when I killed him. Oh, so the narrator was the thief. Right, yeah, the narrator was basically him. The, or, what was it, Tass? I don't remember, but it's this Jedi. This He's not a Jedi. He's Force-sensitive, though, for sure. Yeah. And he's mastered all the arts. So I'm thinking, is he like, what did he say at the beginning? It said that he was a Jedi. The narrator said he was a Jedi, right? 
Um, I don't think the narrator was talking. Because these purple bubbles are this purple creature, this purple force sensitive guy, the thief. Yeah, so I want to say. He says, Not many Jedi remember their lives before the Order. Oh, and he's talking about Bilbar Mac. No, it's not him. He's talking about Bilbar. So this yeah. seems like it ends to be continued, but then when we go to the next page. Get a nice little side story. Peace and unity. With a, that familiar statue. But when it was still standing Correct. and not toppled over yet yep. on Jeddah. And then we learned that there were four of them, but now there's only one left. And by the time of Rogue One, there are none of them standing. And here's Master Levon. Yes. When Master Very Levon cool. was. Yeah. Like a, you know, a tiger. Yeah. Ask creature and i think master isn't master Levon dead here isn't this master Levon? no oh it's not I don't so. that's what I, thought. I believe that's somebody from the temple so in here she's meditating to be away from everyone and then she gets called in she's like oh i wanted to meditate she liked being out here she goes into jetta towards the temple she's like oh for the love of the force they're fighting in there she's like what's going on she's just trying to stop them and then this little guy i remember him from the from this Phase one comics, remember? When uh, the one Jedi is training and she's climbing up and then the little Oh Keev. Keev, yeah. Keev Trennis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she it has to save his little village. Doesn't he look like him? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's... uh yeah, Keev Keev Trennis and, mm -hmm. and Skier. Right. When he was training her and she was climbing up, and then all yep. of a sudden it was her trials, but she had to stop to rescue little creatures village and that's village. when we really realized that the drenger were the drenger attacking. yeah this kind of looks like drenger too right yeah except for we we realized it's actually that lady there that's like the star wars version of uh poison ivy poison ivy yeah and we got a a plo coon right uh, alien there and then we've got this scary creature looks like a dark jedi or a Sith? Yeah, not yeah, not really sure. Yeah, they're what, all they're all fighting. Yeah. yeah. And so then everybody's fighting, and they're like, "Wait a minute, we're not going to let her in. She's evil. You know, it's a it's a dark user." And they're like, "But this is the con. This we're at the convocation for peace and unity." She's like, "No, not like this. Like they want to join. Like nope." And then finally. Our Padawan says, but have you guys noticed that the only one not fighting is, you know, she's the only one not fighting. So then they ask her, what do you want to do? And she's like, oh, she only speaks through a translator or through this song. What is it? What does she call him, wolf guy? I don't remember. Was there a name? Yeah, they only speak through... It's as if the, the Yakombe arrived on Jeddah for a place of peace and harmony, but now that they've seen all this fighting, this isn't the place for them, so they're going to take off. So they were fighting for nothing because now they're going to leave. They didn't want to join. And they're like, well, that, that settles it because they didn't want them to join anyway. They consider them dark force users. And then here we have Radicus Dobbs. Most people yes. call him Sunshine. And he is Sunshine, Sunshine is from the novel. So, yep, and we uh, and there was a little uh, short uh, video on Star Wars uh, YouTube channel uh, around his character, so really unique. I think we're gonna see him pop up quite a few times, um, cause some trouble, try to get out of trouble. So, very cool character, very cool. And that concludes this issue, and we've got. Issue number two next. Preview cover. Looks really good. Then they've got this checklist of all the phase two coming out. Yep. Uh, very, very cool checklist. stuff. And Love the comic. Me too. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, I'm excited to see what's coming up. Looks really exciting. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely a five out of five holocron rating for me. Same here. I'm going to follow my buddy Bryce. Five out of five holocrons. All right. So thanks for joining us. And remember to check us out on the Star Wars Celebration Europe page and our Twitter account. 
as well as our Instagram page and our associate Facebook pages, Bryce. Yes, uh, Star Wars Book Nerds wouldn't be possible without them. And uh, Star Wars Comic Book Club as well, uh, which I actually oversee that one myself. But yeah, very cool. Um, Very excited for Phase 2. Super excited to be doing the reviews again and uh, getting them a little bit quicker in front of you guys. So hopefully you like the content. And we got plenty more scheduled and coming your way the first and third month, Sunday of every month. So may the force be with you and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. May the force be with you.